I'm here in my S4 HANA GUI system and to set up our own pricing procedure in materials management, we navigate to the transaction code SPRO. Click on ZAP Reference IMG and then we go down up until we find materials management, this one over here, select purchasing and then scroll down up until you can find conditions, this one, and then on define price determination process. This is what we are going to configure. So first of all, we will click on maintain condition tables and then on create condition table. Such a condition table is the table where the system saves all the fields with the combination for our individual so-called condition records. Those condition records you will see in a minute. Let's just say we create a table 999 and then we say based on which criteria our table should be filled. By the way, the number 999 I took on purpose because SAP suggests us that if we want to create own condition tables, we should utilize the numbers 501 up until 999. So far so good. Now we check here the field catalog and over here we will say company code. So select company code, then click on select field. Now you can see it's added here to the left hand side. Also we will take the plant and we take the supplier number. So this one over here, select field. So this means that later on our pricing procedure will be valid for a combination of company code, plant and supplier. So when we insert the information in our purchase order or purchase requisition, then our pricing procedure will be pulled by the system based on the information we provide here. Now once we are ready, we click on generate. Do you want to generate the condition table? Yes. Just save it. I will save it as a local object. And here you can see the status. Now it's saved. Okay, let's go back and back again. We can also double check by clicking on display condition table and then enter. And here you can see our condition table was created successfully. Back and back again, close the view. And here we save the information like that. So in the end, you can see here the full picture. By now we created the condition table 999. Now we maintain a so-called access sequence. So we click here on define access sequences for purchasing. Click on this one. What the access sequence does is that it will search for our condition records within our condition table that we just created. And one of those access sequences could actually contain one or even multiple of those condition tables. So not only condition table 999, but also 998, 997 and so on, if necessary. We will now click on new entries. We provide a name for the access sequence, let's say that ABC, a description, test, access, sequence, and then we can just hit on enter. And now it's created. We select the access sequence and click on accesses. So click on new entries. We say number one. And here, this column is for the condition table that we just created. This was 999. Then over here, you could say exclusive if necessary. So imagine that we would have like number two with the table 998 and a number three with the table 997 and so on. And the system would later on search for valid entries in those tables. So later on, you will also see the table that we can fill with data based on the company code, the plant and the vendor. And if we have another table, let's say based on the purchasing organization and purchasing group and another one based on some other criteria, then the system could search in all of those tables if they're valid entries. And it will first search here for the number one. So it will look into the condition table 999. And if the system does not find any entry maintained in this table, then it will go on, look for the number two and look into the table 998 and so on. But if I hit this exclusive indicator over here, then the system will stop searching once it found an entry in the table 999. This is the whole difference. For now, we just have one number. So let me just delete those ones over here and we hit on enter. This is fine and that's fine. We select the entry and click on fields, hit on enter. You don't need to do anything else over here. Just make sure that it's green like that. And here you can also see the company code, the plant and the supplier ID. As you recall, those stem from the table we created before. And then we can click on save and save. Let's look into our PowerPoint. We created the condition table and assigned the condition table to the access sequence. Let's go back into the system. Go back, back again, couple of times back up until we are in the customizing overview. Now it's time to maintain the condition type. So we click on define condition types, click on set pricing condition types purchasing. And those condition types over here are used for different type of charges, so to say, as you can see rebates or some taxes, cash discounts and so on. So for instance, if 
we buy material for a price of 100 and we have a discount of 10, then the 100 would go to one condition type, let's say here for the gross price custom, and the 10 would go to the cash discount condition type. We will scroll down a bit, up until we see PBXX, this one over here, and then we click on copy. Now we give it a new name, let's say Z, PBX cross price custom, and then we assign the access sequence that we created before, which was called Z, A, B, C, and then click on copy. Click on save, and that's it. Let's check our PowerPoint again. We now created our condition table, assigned the condition table to an access sequence and assigned the access sequence to a condition type. Let's go back into the system. Here we go back, close the view, and then we click on set calculation schema purchasing. This is very crucial for our pricing determination as we define the calculations for the condition type we created before. So we click on new entries, then we say Z ABC, we call it own calculation schema, then we click on enter, take our entry and click on control data. And you can see lots of options for the calculation. We will take a simple example, click on new entries, then we provide the step number, one, the counter is also set to one and our condition type. As you recall, our condition type we just created is called ZPBX. So we insert it over here, then provide a description, gross price, custom, those columns we leave blank as is, as well as those over here. Then we have a column for printing types. And this actually controls the output of our condition lines when we print purchase related documents like our invoices. We will say X for now, which is printing for line item. And then over here in the subtotals, we can say whether and in which fields condition amounts or subtotals are stored. Let's inspect the search help. And normally you select nine copy values from KOMP BRTWR for the gross value. So far so good. Let's take one more step. We call it step two. Here for the counter we will say zero. And now we select another condition type. This time we will take one which is already in the system. We will just take this one over here, absolute discount, call it discount custom. And then this is quite important. We want to say that this line over here is calculated based on the first line. So for the from, we will select a one. Now the system will then look into the first line to determine the second. Last but not least, let me insert another step three, count to zero. This one we will leave blank and we will just say total discount amount. It should take its values from the second row. So we insert a two and then step four would be zero again, nothing over here and then total amount and that's it. Now we click on save and save. Let's look into our PowerPoint. We now created the condition table, assigned it to an access sequence, assigned the access sequence to our condition type and then we assigned our condition type or in this case even two condition types. As you can see over here, let me just insert the other one, R002. Those two we assigned to our calculation schema. Let's go back into the system, back, back again couple of times back up until we can see our customizing. Next off we will maintain the so-called schema group for our vendor. So click on define schema groups, define schema groups for suppliers. Let's create a new one, set to custom schema group. The schema group we will then later on assign to our vendor. And in a second we will create another one which we will assign to our purchasing organization. So in the end via the schema groups the system can fetch the pricing procedure. So let's click on save. That's basically it. Let's look into your PowerPoint. We maintained the schema group for our vendor. You will see the connection in a second. Now let's go back into our system, back again, and we will click on define schema groups for purchasing organizations. Let's click on new entries. We will call it Z123, schema group custom, and then save. Let's look into our PowerPoint. We now defined also the schema group for the purchase organization and called it Z123. Now let's go back and back again. And here you can see assign schema groups to purchasing organizations. Click on this one. And here we will now assign the schema group Z123 that we just created to one of our purchasing organizations. And by the way, if you want to find out how to create a purchasing organization, I made a separate video about that. I will leave you a link in the description of this one. Enter and save. Okay, let's now look into our PowerPoint. We assigned our schema group for the purchasing organization called Z123 to our purchasing organization 2010 in this example. 
Let's go back into the system. We will click on Define Schema Determination and then on Determine Calculation Schema for Standard Purchase Orders. Double click. And here we will now link our schema group that we created for the purchasing organization and the one we created for the supplier to our pricing procedure. So let's actually click on New Entries and take the information from our PowerPoint. Our schema group for the purchasing organization was Z123. So Z123. Our schema group for the supplier was Z2. So Z2. And our pricing procedure slash calculation schema was Z2. ABC. Hit on enter and that's it. Click on save. So let's check our PowerPoint. We selected the schema for our vendor and for our purchasing organization and link both of them also to the calculation schema. Let's go back, back again and out of the view. Now it's time to store our schema group for the vendor in our business partner. So we go to slash OBP. We select the business partner. Then we navigate to our purchasing information and into our purchasing data. By the way, I have a whole playlist about the business partner. I will leave you the link in the description of this video. Let's go to the change mode. We provide a new purchasing organization, create 2010, transfer. Now we go down a bit, just say order currency euro, payment terms 0001, and let's scroll down. Up until we find the additional purchasing data. And over here you can see schema group supplier. We now insert our custom schema group Z2 and then we can say save. And that's it. Let's look into our PowerPoint. We assigned our schema group for the vendor to our business partner master. And as you know, the schema group itself will derive the calculation schema over here in combination with the purchasing organization. So far so good. Let's close this window. And last but not least, we will now maintain our actual condition record. The easiest way to do so is to navigate to slash n M E K two. Now we include our condition type, which was that PBX. Hit on enter. We provide our company code and the plant and also our supplier. Then we hit on execute. We now state our supplier again. As you recall, the company code plant and supplier stems from our condition table that we created in the beginning. So the table 999. And here we can now define for our supplier the unit price and let's also say per one kilogram as an example valid from today up until the end of the year then we click on save our condition was now saved we can also inspect the condition via slash n m e k 3 so to execute here you can see what we just inserted now last but not least if we now go to slash n m e 21 n and create a new purchase order with our supplier 1449 purchase organization, the group, and also the company code. And if we then insert a material created in our plant, then scroll down a bit, insert the plant as well. Let's scroll down again, then go to the conditions tab. And over here you can see our custom condition that we just created. And this is the whole price determination in SAP s hana You can see our gross custom price and also the absolute discount. Let's take a last look at our PowerPoint here I inserted the condition record and as you can see, this will link our business partner master to the condition table we created in the beginning. And this condition table is, as you know, assigned to all of those objects over here. This marks the end of the video. It took a lot of effort, so I would really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel and also please don't forget to activate the bell. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.